Good morning to both of you. It's a pleasure to be here. We're doing some research to find out about different land models that are being um, utilized as group efforts. And we learned and heard fantastic things about this particular farm. And we, you were highly recommended. And so we are here today to learn more about your practices and your group model to hopefully be able to educate other people um, and other farmers who may be interested in the model. So I have a list of questions that I'm going to ask and uh, we have agreed that we're gonna do one in one. And if you have a burning insight, do you wanna add anything, please do so. Uh, would you like to start please by introducing yourselves, letting us know your name and the name of the farm and just a little bit about yourself. So I'm Janet Bailey. We run Fairwinds Farm Okay. on, right. on a piece of land where there are two, land, two farms working. And so we're Fairwinds Farm and Wild Carrot Farm is the other farm. Okay. All right. So, yeah. and, Thank and you. And we share the 40 acres that, yeah. that make up the farm. I'm Jay Bailey, <laughs> uh, the other half of, of the pair of us. Um, <laughs> And we've been here on the farm 40 years, mm -hmm. 42 years, I think. Well, let, let me ask you another question okay. that, that is going to lead to that. Tell us a little bit about your beginnings as a farmer and what has been your journey. My father was not a farmer. He was a college professor, but he very much enjoyed his Growing up, he and his brother spent time on their uncle's farm, and so he was partial farmer at heart. My family was was exposed to farming, although we weren't didn't live on a farm. Okay. Um, and part of that was in the summers coming to Vermont to work at a su summer camp that had a has an extensive farm. Uh, and so I got experience there, and after high school I worked there. Um, I was also a, a camp counselor, and that's where, that's where Janet and I met. So that's how I got started farming. Okay, um, okay. And, and then after... <clears throat> After we were married, I did a number of different things, but kept coming back to working on farms in various ways. And, and um, well, and then there's then there's the story of how we got here, but that's um, that's a good leeway. It's yeah. a good leeway. So tell yeah. tell us a little bit about what is the story on how this particular farm got formed. How, how did the, it the form? Family. How did you okay. start and, so, and okay. where are you currently? So we were, um, we, we always knew that we wanted to farm, work farm. My, my own background is just having been exposed to a lot of farming. My dad was worked farms and um, always had a garden. We always had a garden no matter where we lived. Um, so that's what I wanted to do. Um, I was a trained nurse also, I just finished nurse's training. Um, but that was that worked well because that fit into my life too. Um, so we we really knew that we wanted to farm, but the problem was we had no money <laughs> mm. to buy land. So we started looking um, for land and just let people know we were looking around Vermont. And um, it was just we were real idealists. We just knew we wanted to farm, and it was really impractical. But um, we were. We had some friends who um, came from this area and they heard that we were looking for farmland and they um, introduced, you know, said, well, we know of a farm for sale. And they told us that they were running a, um, had helped to start a land trust, a small grassroots land trust um, down here and they had they had been talking on the on the radio program about it um, and shortly after the radio program an old farmer had called them and said I really like what you're doing I really like your story 
but you got to prove to me that it works. I can't believe it works. Mm -hmm. So they started visiting with him, and, and um, after a while he said, well, I have a farm, and I haven't farmed it for 10 years. I'm too old. Um, it used to be a Jersey milking farm, 10 Jerseys. He said, um, but I need a farmer, and I'd be willing to give this land to the land trust if I can stay here for the rest of my life, or for however long that is. Mm -hmm. um, I'll trade you my house and the farm for... So, oh. <laughs> so they brought us down to, to... His name was Claude Tate. They came, brought us down to visit him. And um, we had a long visit. He showed us the farm. Um, he lived alone in this big farmhouse. Um, he'd been there alone. His mother had died 10 years before. Mm. Um, and we looked around, you know, we had two little kids <laughs> at that point. And I, I was, I was very way. pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so we went back up to our home up, up for the north and um, I don't know, within 24 hours our friends called us and said, Claude wants to know when you're going to move in. Oh, wow! <laughs> that is amazing! He had inter he'd interviewed several other people and they weren't right, but he said he wants to know when you're going to move in. <laughs> so we had lots of decisions to make. It was the fall of the year, you know, it was wow. October. And, um, you know, it was just like do we do this? Do we not do this? It was the only way we were going to get started because, yeah. like I say, we had no money. Yeah. So, um, so that's kind of the story. We, we moved in here. We moved in in late October, early November. Um, the baby was born in early December. <laughs> and um, we moved Claude to one end of the house and we took over the rest of the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Earthbridge Community Land Trust is a small, I think we have seven parcels, um, grassroots organization, um, not-for-profit, it's not a non-profit, but um, that owns land with a goal of leasing it out um, to folks who want to be on the land and not, not other ways, so don't have much means to do it. The way it works is we lease land for, a, a, we can buy a, life, a lifetime lease um, to be on the land. We own the buildings, but we don't own the land. Okay. We don't even the own the trust, land under the buildings. Right. We just own the buildings, the improvements on the land. So the land trust can keep control of who's on the land and who's okay. not. Okay. Um, and it really was the only way that we could have farmed because we didn't have to put down a deposit. Mm -hmm. We just had to pay our monthly lease and we could negotiate whatever lease that amount that we were able to. You could? Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, that's, you know, that's changed a little over the years, but, okay. but that's sort of the idea that, that, um, you have a life a lease, and then that gives you a guarantee of being on the land for as long as you want to be, and as long as you're um, taking care of the land. Okay. Okay. But we started to realize that um, in order for this land to be well taken care of, we were slowing down, and we needed to bring in some new energy. Okay. Into the farm. Okay. To really take good care of it and to make good use of it. Okay. Because um, it's wonderful land yeah. for growing, and so we. Um, we made the, we asked the land trust if it would be all right for us to find somebody else to come in with us, mm -hmm. and that worked well. Um, the plan was that we built our own house to move into, and the new farmers would move in here, and we would um, we would share the land. They pay, you know, we gave up sort of our right to use some of the land and gave it over to them, and they okay. started paying their lease payments. We, we started the process of finding, and, and we interviewed four or five couples. Um, but when Jesse and Caitlin walked into our living room, we knew they were the right ones. Okay. And um, they had been farming for three years um, up the road here and had just lost the, the rent on their place. So mm. they were looking for a place. And um, 
So the plan was that they would move on and they wanted to grow vegetables. Mm -hmm. And we had grown vegetables in the past, but okay. we were done with that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so they came in to do that and they had some sheep at first and things, but they really were interested in doing this way. Okay. And so we work here together and and I think one of the reasons it works is that they have their own business and we have our own business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We don't try to run the same business together. Yeah. We do share resources. Okay. They use the horses, which we still own for them. Um, but that's, that works well. Okay. And we share this building. Okay. So we share some things, but we do have our own enterprises, so we're not trying to, you know, fighting about how to run a business all the time or something. We use what would probably be described as an, a fairly unconventional model. We farm undivided halves. Can you elaborate on that? <laughs> There's the whole of the farm, 40 acres. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. not a line that says, this is yours and this is mine. Mm. There's, there's no line. We talked enough at the beginning about our basic approach that we we felt comfortable with with Jesse and Caitlin and and their approach to things. We trust your judgment mm. and we will work together to make decisions that affect the whole farm. We will make those de decisions together. The best simple phrase that I've ever heard for that is is undivided halves. Okay, okay. That, that there isn't a, a dividing line. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's that we know we have to work together and we want to work together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I guess you could say, like a marriage, it takes work. Yes. But, yeah. But w we find that it works very well. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Anything that adds stress? What are there? What are are there anything that adds stress? Well, the environmental changes. <laughs> <laughs> Talk a little bit more about that. Well, with with farming, you always have stress, right? I mean, weather is is a huge stressor. Mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons that we have done well and that small farmers do well um, is diversity. So our big, our sort of overall plan when we moved here was to have several different enterprises, not put all our eggs in one basket, so yeah. to speak. We put a lot of eggs in one basket around here. But 60 this morning. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so we had a laying egg, laying hens, and we had um, we raised pigs for a while, sold piglets. We had six sows. We had four or five, six horses, and we were breeding them every year, so we were selling foals. We sold about between 50 and 60 foals okay. over our lifetime. Um, draft animals. Okay. Um, we did we use the horses to do workshops, to mm. teach farming. We used them to do sleigh rides in the winter. So that's three different incomes from the horses. Um, and we did vegetables for farmer's market. Okay, so, and we did a variety of vegetables. It wasn't just one crop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, didn't have a good vegetable year. It was okay. We had horse income, chicken income, pig income, you know. So, so that hopefully we were doing well on three or four of the five or six enterprises we okay. had every year. Okay. So that was when we had drought year. It was okay because we were, you know. Okay. So that's a big security for people is, is diversity. Okay. I like that. Thank you for sharing that. So it, you don't have to go into just one thing. It sounds that it's, it's important. Better, it's better not to go into just one thing. To have that diversity and land access in relation to the diversity that you were just talking about for new beginner farmers and all that good stuff. Well, so this land trust model really, really um, supports that, right? Because it makes it accessible to people who don't have money. That's awesome. We had less than $1,000 when we came to this farm. We still don't have a whole lot more than that, but we're here and we've <laughs> yes, had a wonderful life. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I love it. What, what do you think um, these models um, that in the past have formerly been oppressive, what do you think some of the difficulties are um, and why this model may be more appealing or a better choice um, than independently? What are your thoughts around that? We human beings evolved, have evolved, in communities, and and we 
we need to actively cultivate communities. Um, what would I say to anyone who wants to farm? It can be done. Don't let anybody tell you it can't be done. Um, if, <laughs> I mean, the number of times <laughs> that people looked at us and kind of, sh I think they shook their heads and said, what are those fools going? <laughs> but we are still here. Yes, you are. A and we were helped by many of those same people, probably because we stuck it out. Um, so it, it can be done and believe in yourself. Um, believe in others, but, and, 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 and working together in, in communities, mm -hmm. um, is terribly important. Just, just so incredibly important. Um, we try to be helpful and supportive of others in part because others have been helpful and supportive to, for us, to us, at times when they didn't have to. Um, and so we try to pass that on. Uh, the challenge that is usually present with, with the economic system that most of us, that we have to deal with, is finding funding. Um, but groups getting together are more likely to be able to have different resources they can draw on and find sources of funding, some here, some there, and you put it together and you can, that's how this land trust started. Mm -hmm. uh, because because some people had a dream and were following it and trying to make it work and and we were lucky enough to be to be able to be a part of that um, and so now we're trying to trying to continue it and um, it, but again it it can be done you have to be determined mm. um, but <laughs> You have to work hard, right? Uh, I have heard that said, yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I wake up every morning and I'm happy to be able to be doing what I am doing. That's awesome. Yes, I have to work hard. But is there anything else that I would rather be doing? No. That's awesome. Um, and some people probably would say, oh, you're crazy. <laughs> that could be. But I'm happy. That's we important. Are, we are happy. And, and that, that is, we feel very lucky. Last words of encouragement or guidance that you will have for new beginner farmers. Any words of wisdom, any encouragement, any thoughts? Don't doubt yourself. Mm. Um, and, and the positive way to say that is b believe in believe in your in your gut in in your um, and that that isn't to say ignore other people mm. and advice, but. There, there's no, there are no hard and fast rules, mm -hmm. um, but if, if, if you have a dream, do what you can to follow that dream. Okay. Um, okay. And, you know, there's the expression, where there's a will, there's a way. Well, mm -hmm. that, that, uh, it, it can be, farming can, 
has been done and it can be done. And don't let anybody tell you you can't.